Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. I, the purpose of this video is to give you a quick look at how you can express unemployment on a diagram and understand what it means. There's so much, so many stories involved in these diagrams, and there's different ways you can do it. You can do it the Keynesian way. You can do it the neoclassical way. And then I'm going to show you a beautiful graph that Ellie Tregegi's put together in her textbooks uh, on the IB for IB economic, the companion textbook for IB economics. So check these out. These are really, really helpful things just to have in your mind and to look at this video over and over and over again. Here you go. Okay, first of all, taking a look at cyclical or demand deficient unemployment, right? You can express it the, mon the monetarist or neoclassical way. Or you could express it the Keynesian way, okay? And the way this would look, really simply, you know, you have your regular aggregate supply, aggregate demand, uh, monetarist, neoclassical model. You have the short-run aggregate supply curve. You have the long-run aggregate supply curve, right? And then you have your aggregate demand curve, AD1. Okay, so the whole story begins at price level 1 and YP, right? This this is the market equilibrium, Uh set up where price level meets um, real GDP. And then all of a sudden there's an event. And the event in this case is a drop in demand, right? Aggregate demand shifts inward. And as a result, you're going to show that there's a new price level, right? Real GDP equilibrium point, and she has it labeled PL2, right, and Y recession, this is showing a drop in demand. And the difference between these two lines right here is what you would call an inflationary gap, okay? So that distance between these two lines is an inflation, I'm sorry, is a recessionary gap, not an inflationary gap, a recessionary gap. And therefore, you could say, no, the uh, demand has dropped, and there's a recession, and as a result, there's going to be cyclical or demand deficient unemployment it's demand deficient unemployment because demand is deficient right there's a drop in aggregate demand and you could show that here okay so there's one way and the exact same thing you could do with the keynesian model here's the keynesian aggregate supply curve of course you know there's only one and the story starts at ad1 and then there's a drop in aggregate demand for whatever reason and demand drops and here, this gap right here is a recessionary gap, and you can say, use this model to express a drop or a drop in employment, or to express demand or de deficient unemployment or cyclical unemployment. Either one of these would work, and you have, and the, no matter what, this is the same thing, right? This gap right here is a recessionary gap. Okay, so you could there's the ways you could express cyclical or demand deficient unemployment on a graph. Now, check out these models. These are pretty cool, too. And this is something Jason Welker put together in his course companion. And I want to share these with you. Here is the natural rate of unemployment, right? And this is a magical little combination of aggregate demand, aggregate supply, right? Of course, this is a neoclassical model of the long-run aggregate supply curve. And when the economy is operating right here, right, then there is a natural rate of unemployment. The economy above, the economy above is producing at its full employment level. So unemployment is therefore at its natural rate and there's only frictional, seasonal, and structural unemployment. And that means that at this optimal point, every there's full employment. And we know that full employment means that there's probably about a 5% unemployment rate or a natural rate of unemployment as a result of frictional, seasonal, and structural unemployment that, that's actually healthy. That's a sign of a strength of an economy. Okay, so you could express it that way. Well, what about demand deficient unemployment? Well, this is uh, Jason Welker's way of expressing the same thing that you just saw from L.A. Tregegi's and that there's a drop in demand, right? Demand is going to drop from AD, right, to AD2 uh, here. I'll label it, right? AD2, A D just make it sloppy looking just to get the point, right? You get it. Then there is a drop in demand, and as a result, this gap between this new equilibrium point and the long-range aggregate, aggregate supply curve should could show demand-deficient unemployment. I just talked about it. Okay, so the economy is in a recession, a cyclical unemployment, um, and the unemployment rate is greater than the natural rate of unemployment, probably somewhere around 8 9% here, okay? Because there's a recessionary gap. It's showing the same thing. Okay, 
But what about a negative supply shock? How would you show that on a graph? Well, negative supply shock, what does that mean? That means that there's going to be a drop in supply. Why? I don't know. Maybe energy prices increase. There's a huge, I don't know, gasoline gouging experience going on. A big natural disaster. A war will create sometimes short-term supply shocks. So the economy above has been in has seen an increase in the cost of energy. Firms therefore have reduced unemployment and the economy is in recession and is experiencing high inflation as well, right? The average price level has gone up to this level here, right? After the shift of the aggregate supply curve in here to AS2, let's call that, you can see that there's a new equilibrium point Right, the price level here and in the real GDP here. And this gap between these two lines is going to represent what? A recessionary gap. But caused by demand? No. Caused by a supply shock where supplies have, have decreased, which is going to create an increase in the price level, which is inflation, and also a drop in unemployment. So this could be a really valuable diagram for you to use as well. All right, so check it out. Those are some really cool things that you can incorporate into your brains, right, to try to help you understand um, how unemployment works and how to express it. Because if you can't express it, it doesn't matter if you know how it works. The IB world demands that you express it. Okay, so put those in your arsenal and then check out this last diagram put together by Ellie Chagigis. And here, my friends, is the granddaddy of them all. In one graph, in one visual, in one diagram, it sh you can, this shows you how to express the four types of unemployment in relation to the aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. Of course, right away when you see long-run aggregate supply curve um, and a short-run aggregate supply curve, you know you're talking about the neoclassical view. But check out what Ellie Tregegis did. At this and it best to start right here, okay? This is a gold mine for you. This, this, this diagram gives you all the information that you could possibly want in explaining un in inflation. I'm sorry, unemployment and actually inflation as well. So at the, the, it starts in the middle. At the long-run aggregate supply curve, right, you're at the potential GDP. Unemployment equals the sum of structural, frictional, and seasonal unemployment, or natural unemployment, and there's zero cyclical unemployment. This is the master spot, right? Okay, so that's really cool. You know that when you're starting right there, right, you're starting at a place that is really helpful to understand, because if you know that starting point, and then you know that there's an event that you're going to experience because the IBRs gives you an event. Maybe it's a drop in demand, aggregate demand. Maybe it's a supply shock, right? So short-run aggregate supply curve is going to pinch in. Then anytime you're working to the left, and look at how she put her brackets here. It's beautiful. You know that you're working in a recessionary gap where unemployment is less than the natural rate of unemployment, and therefore there is cyclical unemployment, in addition to structural, frictional, and seasonal unemployment, right? Anytime you are working in this range of the graph to the left of the long-run aggregate supply curve, you are running, I should make that red, you are running over here in a recessionary gap. Things are not well. They're cyclical unemployment. Okay, beautiful and then now look at any time, therefore, you're working out here, and I'm going to make this blue because blue is kind of happy, right? Any time you're working in this portion of the, of the graph, the diagram, which is to say beyond the long-run aggregate supply curve, beyond potential GDP, if you think about the business cycle, this is the long-term trend line, then you know you're working in an inflationary gap because any change in aggregate demand is going to read, is going to result in an increase in price level. Right? So it's an inflationary gap. There is zero cyclical unemployment. The unemployment is less than the natural rate, some around 2 3%. I always tell students to use 2% because a portion of structurally, frictionally, and seasonally unemployed um, find temporary unemployment. So any time that you are operating out here, it's an inflationary gap. Things are, the economy is humming along. Things are great. Unemployment is below the natural rate. But that's actually a problem because as, as, in, as you get into the inflation, your studies of inflation, you're going to realize that when you're operating out here, it's only in the short run. Eventually, things are going to go back to the long run, and usually they do at a higher price level. 
Okay, so in the short run, things might be great, unemployment's great, politicians are bragging about how great they are, but at some point it's going to settle back where? To the long run aggregate supply curve. This might be a boom period of the business supply, of the business cycle, right? A boom period. Down here is a recessionary period or a trough. So you're going to see how this diagram, if you understand all of the stories that are told by just understanding long run aggregate supply, um, and the short run aggregate supply and the aggregate demand, and you understand this, what this YP, what this equilibrium point means, and you understand when you're left of it, you're in recession. When you're right, you're in an inflationary gap or you're in a boom time. You can use this, you can use this, um, this map, this map. It's like a map. It actually is like a map. You can use this diagram as a map to understand all the ways in which you can express uh, unemployment and also what it means for you and your ability to evaluate solutions to government, to solutions to problems in an unemployment. All right. I hope you found this video helpful. This last diagram. Thank you, Ellie Tregeges. You can't, I can't thank you enough for helping students make sense of how to express unemployment using the aggregate demand and aggregate supply model. It's super good. All right, everybody, I hope you found this video to be helpful, and we'll talk to you in a bit.